the um, topic of this new sequence we have been coming together and preparing it you remember last time it has been core values of wildlife education a very general topic and um, now we have choose a different one with the title um, wildlife work and progress perspectives on a modern education and as you see when you look at the website as you can see that we try to cover and to touch topics which are quite topics of our time and it's now more than 100 years that Waldorf is in the world and it's in many places and of course it has changed and of course it is a work in progress and we have to take account of that and have to be aware of that situation and of course we can, can't have final solutions for everything but this um, way of doing reflections and addressing topics and deal with it and maybe um, having exchange about different perspectives this is some kind of a quality work we do so this is really what i hope that when we have a presentation by one of our lecturers that in the end we go into that kind of an exchange and discussion and it will be again this way that you can put your questions into the chat room during the lectures all the time i will take it into account and then after that i will present it to to Wilf, uh, to, to uh, christoph and christoph can answer to that and maybe there's one or other person i asked to put it um um, with with the voice so that we can listen to your voice when you have a question and I will do the choosing the, I will choose it because now we are right now more than 100 people in so this is the kind of, of moderation I try to do but there sh should be an exchange after um, every lecture and we had the experience last year that that was a very fine way um, we, we found together and had a good exchange about all the topics so now this is what I really think if we um, have the lectures and we get um, suggestions of how to deal with modern questions around world of education that we can have different perspectives on that and can deal with it. Thank you so much for joining in and now before I um, introduce Christoph, of course he is very much well known in this community, but nevertheless I will say some words. I'd like to ask Laura maybe to speak about some technical things which are, might be necessary. Yes, thank you, Joost. And also from my side, a warm welcome and hello. And I'm very happy that so many of you are joining our first lecture series of this day or of this year even. And um, some technical aspects to consider um, are just that, of course, we are currently recording the session and it will get uploaded right after the event. And with every reminder, we will also notify you that um, the session is now available on our YouTube channel and also on our website. And um, for those of you that may collect credit points with, um, with joining the lectures, uh, I will uh, upload a, a certificate after, uh, after Christ Christoph's talk and then you can download it and it, it will be available for around an hour as well. Um, I think with any further aspects, you're always welcome to send me your questions or if there are some comments or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. And I think with this, I would like to hand over back to Joost to introduce yeah. Christoph. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Yes, um, I think Christoph is out of my view, but I, I think you, you you agree with it. Is one of the best known wildlife persons in the world, um, traveling to every country in the world where there is a wildlife school and a wildlife community. He himself has been a wildlife teacher from the Netherlands for um, class teacher for many years, and then he has become the head of the pedagogical pedagogical section for many years and. I think his way of, of reflecting on, on wildlife education on, 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 on a very basic level and questioning um, um, the prax practice of wildlife education and suggesting maybe new ideas and perspectives that has been very much fruitful for the development of wildlife education during the last years. He's um, so he's still lecturing, giving classes right now. He just came from my place, from Alanus University, where he has been teaching 
Last week, now I see his background. This is Stuttgart Hochschule, where he is teaching in the international class for, for a week. So he's still traveling all around the world and we can be happy to have him, have him here with us. He's also an um, author of many books, and I'd like to ask Laura maybe to, to put some of the recent books into the chat rooms. There is this, of course, uh, you might find the German titles, but I think many of his books are also translated, so you can get an idea um, what books has been published by Christoph. Today, the topic of what he is talking about is why we should ask why. So what kind of reflection needs pedagogy? What kind of reflection needs world of education nowadays? Thank you to be with us, Christoph. Thank you also for preparing the sequence of lectures and I invite you for your talk. Thank you so much, Joost and Laura. Uh, it's a pleasure to to be again with you. And indeed, we will work on Waldorf in progress. And as you said before, after 100 years, we have to reflect on that. Huh? What, what, what is our progress? And I will start with a, <clears throat> a short historical reflection. I go back to the year 1909. And it was the year that Steiner uh, published his book, um, uh, Knowledge of the Higher Worlds, How It Is Achieved. And for us, that is very simple. And okay, that was in that year. And then there were lots of uh, other editions about that book. But what was the impact in that time? Well, now, a little bit more than 100 years ago. What was the impact? The impact was enormous because in the beginning of the 20th century, it was unheard, unspoken to talk about inner development, to talk about self-management, to talk about the, the inner provinces of the human being. It was unheard. And you have to think it was a kind of an icebreaker situation where Steiner broke the ice of hundreds of years, a solid ice that divided mankind in you believe on Sunday and during the week you know. And now with this book, a bridge was built to know the belief, to know the religion, and to have an entrance to instruments to develop yourself. I give you some of these instruments, instruments from that time. He gave, for example, this instrument that he said, you can meditate, you can, you can try to meditate. And then he, uh, he gave a very simple explanation of meditation. He said, you can meditate in light lives wisdom. And then he said, it is, uh, it is not important if you know what that means. But if you uh, inwardly, again and again, again and again, uh, use this phrase, then it is as if you are drilling a hole in the past, in the solid surface of this ice. Yeah? And from the, from, from, the, from the inside, something will happen to you. It was, that was absolutely unheard. Or an, another sentence he gave, just in, to the public. Uh, while thinking, I feel myself united with world affairs. And that is especially for teachers, such an outstanding sentence. While thinking, while I'm in the thinking process, I feel myself united with what happened in the world. Just, move that thought 
around and around. I'm not responsible for the world affairs, but in my thoughts, in my thinking, I can feel united with them. Yeah, that is uh, that 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 was really the beginning of anthroposophy, 1909. It was an icebreaker situation. Solid ice over a hundred years had to be broken, and Steiner did it. That's one thing I, I would like to, to share with you. Then there is another thing. We just had that funeral of uh, Queen Elizabeth. I guess quite some people somehow a little bit watched it. And there was something extraordinary this time. There was this situation that this funeral with all the ceremonies and uh, all the celebrations around it had a certain quality. And the an amazing thing, thing is that this quality was given by the personality of that queen. Everyone felt, who, who witnessed that a little bit, everyone felt she deserves it. It was her personality, what she did in life, how she handled her duties that was in balance with the way uh, ceremonies and uh, services were held for her. So I want to say we have experienced that a form and a content were in balance. And that is one of the, of the situations of that icebreaker work of Rudolf Steiner that uh, lots of situations came not in balance. I give you another example. In the year 1907, Steiner published a, a little book, very small book, um, about the education of the child in the light of spiritual science. That is a very little book, and he wrote it because he was asked too much to talk about education. So he had to fear that he would not uh, follow his uh, inner task to talk about uh, spiritual science and positive. So he wrote that booklet in the hope that he would not uh, to talk too much about uh, education anymore. And there you see something. There you see an uh, impulse without a form. And that lived for 12 years. And then came this entrepreneur and this, uh, this director of the cigarette factory in a mold who asked him to develop a school and not only to develop it, but also to, to guide that school, to lead it. And then you see something amazing. Uh, from 1909, 12 years later, um, 1919, uh, all these so-called green volumes came into existence where Steiner explained, uh, worked out, this idea about a new education, but at the same time, he had to form it. And that is so very interesting. And, and the whole struggle, if you follow, for example, these conversations with the teachers, this three volumes, uh, uh, GA 300, if you follow that, then you see all these five years that Steiner was together with his teachers, was the struggle to get the impulse together with the, with the form. Yeah. And that is something. And if we ask ourselves, what was now the impulse? Yeah. The impulse was to, to find the education that serves the identity, the, the identity of the child, and that did not serve a, outside necessity. Just focus on the becoming human being. That was the, that was the impulse. 
focus on the becoming human being in all its uh, uh, revelations. And that is something. That was, that was the impulse. And then they struggled in these years after World War I to get this impulse in the reality of a form of a school day. Um, it, it, I, I'm, I personally still think that it is basically a mystery and a miracle that in this year after World War I, uh, they managed to survive. Because if you read the book of uh, Thomas Dražil about the, the first start of the Waldorf School, this wonderful white book, then you will see it was, it, it was the work of Hercules to get that done. I guess today we have not uh, individual uh, qualities to, to do that, but they did. And then think this, Within the first decade after 1919, there were already Waldorf schools in Switzerland, in Britain, in Holland, in Norway, even in the US. The first Waldorf school in New York started in 1928. So you see this impulse had an enormous power. And then came the tragedy of the Second World War. And uh, after that World War, at least in Germany, we had to rebuild everything. And we always have to, to take in mind that it was Emil Mold who in the final days of his life advised to the, the teachers to close the school down. That, uh, that, it is, that it will not be inflicted and affected by the Nazi regime. And this deed that he gave up for the physical reality, shortly before his death, that he gave up that what was the, the, the achievement of his life, that saved the world's movement because they stayed free from the influence of the Nazis. Yeah, these are, these are amazing stories. And then again, 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 then after the World War, we, we restarted in Germany the schools. The, 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 then in the 70s, we get a, a, a huge expansion of the school movement. Uh, a second time in the, in the late 90s. And now we are far above 1,000 schools. And what is this, what is in this moment the situation? In this moment, we, we have to ask ourselves this fantastic, uh, not so easy question. Yeah? Are these schools still the bearer, the vessel, the chalice of that impulse? That is for me, so the question, if we talk about Waldorf in progress, that's for me that question, yeah? Are the schools in this moment still, let me say, the expression of that impulse? And that is a, that is a, that is a, a big question because we have to, to, to work towards the future, huh? towards the second century of the world of education. So I, 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 will, uh, I, I will give you some ideas that came to me the last time in, in the last meetings I had. Um, it, is, it is not complete, but if you look, for example, uh, into Brazil. Uh, in Brazil, we, we know today, I just heard that in Dornach, uh, lots, of, lots of little impulses in eras far away from the mega megalopolises, far away from these huge cities, 
even in the bushes, are little Waldorf impulse activities. You hardly can understand them as a, a Waldorf school as we know them, but there is creeping something between the, the people who somehow understand what is Waldorf. Yeah. Amazing, years ago, South Africa, years ago, it was in the 80s of the last century, there were in South Africa some huge, they are still there, huge and very rich schools. And they imagined there was the impulse that these big rich schools would help the little schools in the underprivileged parts of the city. That uh, these big schools would take responsibility for the financial uh, survival of these little schools in this uh, not so easy parts of these huge cities. And that, that we could see a impulse where uh, the established Waldorf schools took responsibility for the, for the weak one, weak ones. That was an impulse. I'm, I fear it did not survive till now. If you look, for example, in Israel, in Israel, there is in this moment already since a couple of years, by the way, this impulse to um, to bring elements of the Waldorf education into public schools. And that is a quite big thing in this moment. There are quite, uh, there are lots of schools in Israel who are interested in taking some impulses, some uh, educational impulses, arts, sometimes even main lessons, yeah, to, to take parts of the Waldorf uh, form into their own school. Yeah, that is amazing. Yeah. Even in, in, in schools, where the contact are the contacts are quite uh, uh, difficult because they are the fundamental the fundamentalists. Even they are interested. Um, if we look in uh, if we look to Germany, there there you see that, that there we have enormous uh, development of the traditional world of schools, but there we see also this amazing impulse that happens in Mannheim, uh, this impulse of this multi uh, intercultural world school, where um, people from not German origin find a world of school to live with that for years was tried in all places in Europe and it was never a success. But now it happened, yeah? this intercultural world of school in, in Mannheim. Also on a place of the underprivileged. And there are now some other places in Germany where they try to do that also. If we look at, an, in, in, if, if we have a brief overview in America, there you see something, some interesting things in America, we have the so-called independent schools, and year by year, they need, that's understandable, they need more money to, to live, to survive. So the, the schools are getting more and more expensive, and more and more parents are not able to pay that. So you see, for example, the situation that parents apply for a job in that school to make it possible that their children can go to school. That is, that is, uh, we, we all ask ourselves, how will that end? And then you see on the West Coast, the, the development of this, uh, of, of this charter school. 
And there is one school in this, in this field of the charters, these are public schools that can use the Waldorf method. And there's one school in Oakland, the school of Ida Obermann, who is now also in our play and in our room, so to speak. Yeah, that followed that idea we have to give Waldorf experience to the absolute unprivileged. And if you visit that place in Oakland, California, it's on the other side of Lake Washington from San Francisco, I mean, um, then you see Waldorf is there possible. It works, it has an enormous a social positive impact and now recognized by authorities. So you see uh, uh, that that's one development. Another development in America that is not so uh, well known is that the so-called Waldorf homeschooling is developing very fast. That more and more parents homeschool their children and want to do that in the way of Waldorf. Yeah, that is, these are some interesting uh, developments. Yeah. So you see on all places, or on, on several places, we see that the traditional form, uh, so to speak, the, the Ulansuri form, yeah, uh, is abandoned. So the question is, is the form of the Ulansuri still the, the identity? of the impulse. And that question we have to, with that question we have to live. I make a little detour now into the history of the, of the anthroposophical society. And then we come back on, on this question. If we look in the history of the anthroposophical society, then uh, it is known, and most of us know that, that the Anthroposophical Society was not directed by Steiner, not. They had their own board and they, they used Steiner as, uh, as their teacher. And Steiner did what the board wanted. In that time, you could say the impulse of spiritual science was looking for a form, for a vessel, and found its vessel in this anthroposophical society. But Steiner was not the, the, the chair of that society, of that board. And then it happened that more and more the, the society disconnected from the impulse disconnected from the impulse in a way that quite some actions of the society were in contradiction to the impulse of anthroposophy. And that caused huge crises, especially in, in Germany. Crises on a order that uh, the impulse, the spiritual impulse, anthroposophy would not survive. And that crisis ended then in the, in, in, in the, in the fire of the first Gurdjianum. And what happened then, that is, that's amazing, and we have never seen that before in history, that is so interesting, that is so a phenomena, that Steiner reorganized the whole anthroposophy, this, this old, this old, uh, society was uh, abandoned and Steiner created a new society, the General Anthroposophical Society. And what he said about that new society, he, he became the, the chair of the board of that society. What he said, in this new society, impulse and form are identical. And then he said, everything what is done by this society, 
will be done in the light of this spiritual impulse. And then there is this uh, remarkable, not always well understood example of this uh, uh, writing his name under all the, uh, the, 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 the documents of the, of the new members. He could have used a stamp. No, he said, I, I want to do that myself 12,000 times, by the way. I do it myself because then at least I have a glimpse of the, the name from the new members. That is what he said, that is what is human. And the basic principle of, the, of this um, coming together of impulse and form is that everything would be done from the, out of the point of view, what is human. And there you see, and now we come back to the education, there you see something that is for us very interesting. Because our impulse side is what is really hum human, what is humane in the becoming human being and how we serve that. So is now the, the future of the Waldorf movement that we make the same gesture and it was done with the anthroposophical society, that all what we do is an expression of that impulse and how we know what that impulse is, how the impulse expresses itself in form, how we know that. So basically that is the situation in which we are now. That is the situation in which we are now that more and more uh, teachers or find the way to the, to the roots, to the sources, or lose that. And that is, a, that is a, so to speak, a critical situation in the world movement, world of movement in this moment. Huh? Uh, the form is given, do we still recognize if or do, does this form represent the impulse, represent that what was meant with the art of education? Yeah, that is, uh, that is, that is our situation. And the situation is in so far quite serious that uh, we also face, in some countries we face that, we face a, a dying process where step by step the impulse dies out, out of the school. And what is over is an empty vessel. And we have to look at this from, uh, uh, we have to not fixate what I tell, what I said now, we should not fixate that for the whole world. Because on all places in the world, the moments of development are different. We have young world of countries, China, Hong Kong, India, young world of countries. We have a little bit older world of countries, South America. Uh, if you have a young world of country, they are very engaged with this idea of the impulse and finding the right form. And strange enough, there are people who, who, who think that is a form of colonization. That is so, that is so funny. Uh, I understood from colonization that it is giving a form to people who do not want that. That is colonization. Giving a form to those who do not want it. When in a country, Waldorf school happened, then it is because people wanted it. That is totally different. So I, I think it's, it's not wise to talk about of colonization. 
I guess it is wise to talk about recognition. We have recognized that in this movement, in this school atmosphere, we want to raise our children. That is a total different gesture than colonization. And if we talk about colonization, we can also talk about decolonization. Eh? Decolonization cannot be done by those who were thought to do the colonization. Decolonization can be only done by those who are there. So I guess it is important that we, that we look precise at the wordings. That, uh, that we do not get fa false impressions, that we do not get false understandings of, of what is this impulse. What is this impulse? This is the impulse of the education of the, of the fifth e uh, epoch. The Waldorf School is the representation, that's my understanding, is the representation of the consciousness soul. And as you probably know, the consciousness soul is for the whole world is not reserved for certain countries. Yeah, so simple is it. But on the other hand, we live now in this situation, do we still recognize the impulse? And therefore, I, I, I will give you now an idea. It is not an idea that, that, that uh, it, it's, it's not something to, to, uh, to fight about. But just think about this. The form that the Waldorf School was given, 1919, was a form. And Steiner and the teachers did everything to get this form in line with the impulse. Are we now in a moment where we can say we have to give up, not to give up. Uh, are we now in a situation where we can say, do we need new forms? Do we have to go back, so to speak, to the year 1907, and we go back to that little booklet, uh, uh, education in the light, uh, the children's education in the light of uh, spiritual science, where we have no form, but where we realize, where we try to realize in ourselves, yeah, what is this impulse? What children in the 21st century need? And how we build new educational realities? I mean, these huge schools in, uh, in uh, Germany and also in Holland, by the way, we have in Holland huge high schools. They do well. They do very well, also the, the, the elementary schools, of course. They do very well. That is, that is there, there we have seen, we have achieved that. But is the next step in the work in progress that we have to find that we empty the vessel, that we look only at the, at the impulse side, that we try to understand the impulse again and ask ourselves then, what are the needs of children in this time? What in the big cities, what in rural areas, what in well-to-do situations, what in underprivileged situations? What are our what what are our next steps? Now I gave some indications before uh, something from Brazil, South Africa, Israel, and uh, Germany and the US, and there are other places, of course, where we see something developing. And I think what we what, what what is the hope is that we that we can find uh, uh, that we can find a, a much wider perspective of what form what vessels Waldorf could have engaged 
with the input. And for myself, I think that is a kind of a direction of the uh, where the Waldorf school has to develop. I I will give you a, another uh, another uh, uh, thought about this. When Steiner uh, reorganized anthroposophical society, uh, rebuilt the anthroposophical society, the general anthroposophical society. It was in this famous Christmas conference, 23, 24. There in that time, he had a conversation with uh, Swiss teachers. And these Swiss teachers were asking him, um, we do not see a possibility to start a wall of school in Swiss. Can you advise us? And then there are remarkable words from Steiner, and they give me a, a kind of uh, understanding from what I said before. Steiner said then, he said, that we identify today the Waldorf School on their methods. And these methods can be used on all places where people have the goodwill to do it. And then he indicated very precisely that it is not necessary in an isolated world of school. So he advised the Swiss teachers to bring the Waldorf method, methodology, into the public schools. And there was this famous Ayman, this reverend Ayman, who started an organization to do that. And believe it or not, it happened. There were schools, especially in the Bern region, where anthropos anthroposophists, Waldorf teachers, taught in public schools. And everyone knew, yeah, but that's in the, they do it in the world of method. The same we see in this moment in Holland, strange enough, yeah, that uh, beginning world of high school, high schools creep in an existing state high school and form in that state high school a Waldorf tree. It's nearly the same. And uh, sometimes that does not work, yeah, there is a lot of resistance. Sometimes it works wonderfully, and there is a mutual uh, interest in, oh, you do it so, you do it so. I have seen quite some biographies of teachers who were so happy that the world of stream came into their school that they want to take that also in their own education. So you see there, 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 there is something in, in movement. Why I'm telling you that? Because uh, my interpretation of this situation is that Steiner basically gave in that moment the, a, a kind of indication that he said the Waldorf impulse can be uh, realized also in other forms, in other vessels, in other chalices. And I guess that is that is the progress we have. That's the progress we have to to develop now. Right? That we look, that that we free ourselves in respect to that what exists, of course, but that we free ourselves from a form and look from the impulse side, what is needed and can we create to that necessity a new form. That is, uh, I guess, that, that, is, uh, that is the question of today for me. Um, you know, I always, I always like also to say something what is not nice. And I always like to say something that is um, not, not, not well or not well done. And I, I, I say something now. 
I hope you will not be too, too, uh, too offended. These questions I talk now to you are, for my understanding, much more important than the identity gender question. I guess this gender identity question, that is a wave that comes and goes, hopefully. But what we talk about content and form, about impulse and how transform the impulse that more and more children in the world can recognize their being, their own being, by the way they were raised in school, that is, I guess, for the next 100 years, uh, a very important question for us all. I give back to, uh, to um, Joost or uh, Laura. Basically, I'm done. Thank you so much, Christoph. Thank you. So now we have the opportunity to have a bit of an exchange about that. And um, there has been already one question put into the chat by um, Siva. Uh, it has been directed uh, to me directly and I just uh, uh, read it from the chat, Christoph. Is it like there is so much focus on the form that we lose the impulse that initiated the form, but continue holding on to the form, which is nothing but an empty shell. Yeah, that is very interesting. Uh, that is true. That's absolutely true. Uh, our our societies, uh, especially in the in the first world, are over organized heavily over-organized. That means it gives enormous form impulses that can crush the content very much, yeah, that, that we see in all places. You see that also in the, in the, in the healthcare. Yeah, the, the, the form side is overwhelming. Is this an answer for you, Siva? Yes, uh, it, it answers it really well. And uh, can I add uh, a few more words? Yes, please. Yeah, it, I believe that um, we can compare it to the ritual some of us, you know, carry in our, sometimes in our daily life or sometimes as a traditional ritual, where we have actually forgotten the impulse that initiated the ritual. And we have totally lost that but we continue engaging in that ritual just because you know it is like a form of uh, representing that impulse but the impulse is completely forgotten so the ritual no more ca you know it doesn't carry the meaning anymore thank you thank you no, siva that is that's precisely what you said uh, that's what i indicated when i said we see also a slowly dying uh, of all of schools. That is precisely, you give an example for that. So, um, Dirk, welcome to our round, and it's your word. Yeah, hi, Christoph, and thanks hey, for your Dirk. Nice to meet you again. Uh, I would like to suggest to go even a step uh, further, because you, as you, you might remember, there was this uh, Bauhaus in Weimar, about the same time, like the first world of school. And you know, there's this famous line, form follows function. Yeah. So I think when, when the main thing is to focus on the impulse and to understand what is the meaning of it and uh, not to worry too much about the form because I think the form will sort of, yeah, come out of when we work on the impulse. It's, uh, I think uh, also, um, you always you were talking about one impulse and one form, but I think uh, the impulse is, uh, as far as I can see, is very diverse, and the forms this or this very diverse impulse might take up. Uh, they, these forms can be also very diverse. So as as soon as you uh, focus on a certain form, 
then we might lose many aspects of the original impulse. And uh, so I, I, that's my impression that uh, many forms, maybe even we don't know how many forms might fit to the original impulse. Yeah, this is very interesting, Dirk. Thank you so much. Um, um, there's, a, there's a spiritual law uh, in the physical world, uh, you you express that law. Uh, form follows uh, form follows. Uh, how you said it in in the architecture? Huh? Form follows function. Form follows function. Now, the the in the spiritual reality, it is a impulse need a form to be war to be workable on earth. Uh, in your profession, for example, eh? the, the phenomenological me method by Goethe did not find its form. Yes, with an, and some anthroposophists, of course. But it did not find its form in the scientific community. And it got lost. And that is that is related with this hundred year cycle, and therefore it's so interesting in the time we live now that uh, after three generations, uh, Steiner describes that uh, on, the, on the biography on Goethe. After three generations, a spiritual impulse or dies out if it has not found its form, or it has to be reborn. And I guess these are the questions in, in with, with which we have to we, we face now. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, and I guess the, the the basic impulse is is uh, is not so manifold. I guess it is quite precise huh? how to help new generations uh, to become humans. That is, uh, yeah, that's that. But it can have so many different forms, and we have to look for that. Yeah. So I guess we we agree basically. Yeah. Yeah. There is a there is a Becky. Hello. Thank you. I want to speak as a curative educator, someone who's used the Waldorf curriculum for a long time <clears throat> here in the Camp Hill School in, East, in Eastern Pennsylvania. And it occurs to me from your talk, Christoph, that the form that we are always supporting with our children, the form is actually the human being. And the content that we're trying to have the form hold is also the human being. And uh, of course, working curatively with students is at once sometimes more simple than working with typically developing students, but usually it is a lot more complicated. But your talk has made me been able to kind of synthesize this question of form and content so that when you realize that the form we are bringing is informed by the spiritual world, grounded on earth, and the impulse that we wish the form to hold also has that same connection to the spirit and the earth, then uh, I can see how the possibilities of where this form and this impulse can be expressed are really limitless and can be, they can manifest through all kinds of different culture and language or lack of language. Thank you. Uh, Becky, it's highly interesting what you say. Can you give an example how form is inspired by, by the spiritual reality? We would have a child before us where the form is uh, is compromised because of a any kind of a disability or a delay. And what is our task as a curative teacher or as a Waldorf teacher 
is to see the perfection living in that imperfect form. Yeah. 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 So you identify the form with the with the yeah with the appearance of the child. Yeah, then I understand that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um Christoph, there's one hand by Nicolina, but there has been um, one question before by Daniel um, in the chat room. I would like to place that before Nicolina, if it's okay for you. So Daniel asks, um, how can the impulse be shared and propagated? Yeah. I don't know if it, it's um, good to um, um, elaborate a bit of, um, about the question, um, Daniel, because it's a bit short. Um, maybe you can um, come in with your microphone and tell us what, what is the background of your question, Daniel. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, very well. Um, my question is, as the impulse is something that streams through us and very much comes from the soul, how do we share that amongst one another? Because a form is something that we can touch and the impulse itself is something that is more intangible. And so on a practical level, on a daily level, what is it that allows us to, first of all, have the impulse alive in our own being, and then to take the step of sharing that with others? Um, and in what way can that take a practical ground in relation to the question? Yeah. Um, therefore, I started my, my contribution today with these two uh, meditative examples. And uh, I think if, if we truly want to understand the, the, the concepts of the, 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 the art of education, then we have to go over two paths. One path is the, is the scientific understanding in, 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 in science, understanding of the the spiritual acknowledged uh, anthropology. And on the other side, we have to turn inwards and try to develop our inner capacities that gives us, if you follow that book, uh, uh, How to Achieve Higher Worlds, uh, that gives us, the, that gives you an indication and direction. If you if you if you go uh, if you find a if you find for yourself a inner path, then you find uh, ways of guidance and direction in in your thoughts, and I guess that is something that 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 is some that is also our task today, to to recreate that. Yeah, yeah, because it's so very interesting that. Um, why we do what was the, 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 the subtitle of my contribution. Why do we, we do what? Yeah, that gives very nice uh, conversations. But if one said, yeah, for me is, is the why of the what this and for the other it is that. Yeah, then you do not, then you do not, then you don't have progress in your school. Yeah? We, we have to find a, a momentum where we can say to each other, to each other, oh yes, that we recognize. And that, that comes from, from uh, the, the development of, of, of inner capacities. Does that make sense for you, Daniel? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Nicolina, it's yours now. Hi, everyone. Hi, Christoph. Hey, Good that's you again. Nicolina, <laughs> how oh, nice. Hi. Um, I've been listening very carefully and um, thinking about a lot of things that we have uh, going on here in Croatia. I'm sure that, I don't know if anyone mentioned uh, that we have, um, that we have a high school that is following actually the state curriculum, but is using uh, Waldorf method. When you were mentioning these kinds of things, actually, in your le lecture, it, give me, it gave me my question. So not only about this school, but also that we can see uh, in our public education 
that some of the small bits and pieces are taken from Waldorf. And um, in the last try to reform the educational system in Croatia, they've tried to do a lot of things, but actually we've noticed that there is something missing. I'm sure that everyone here in wider, whoever is in contact with Waldorf pedagogy would, would really like to all the children have uh, the contact in any kind of way, even only using the method. But we all know in Waldorf that method isn't just the method, that method, method has a certain background. And ex exactly what you said in your title, why is important to ask why? So my question is actually, how do we as a, as a movement work together in such a way that all those uh, schools which would like to introduce our methods, how do we actually get them to ask, why are we actually doing this this way? Yeah. Is it just because the method works or is it something deeper? Um, so It's both, huh? it's both. Yeah. But how do we do it? Yeah. And it's not yeah. only, you know, every country within itself, every school, I, I have a feeling that that this is also something that belongs to the whole movement. Yeah, the, the, uh, I gave you that example from Israel. Eh? It, yeah. It, it was very interesting. There's one person, there are more, but I know one, uh, Gilad Goldschmidt. He travels to all the schools hmm. in the morning and talks with the teachers. And a month later or two months later, he comes back and has the next talk. And uh, yeah, well, I, I have the idea, or I, I understood that it is very effective. So you need people who are uh, who are capable, <laughs> who are capable yeah, to talk the language of today in a spiritual way. Yeah. But in the language of today, not in the language of yesterday. Yeah. So my question is, do we have actually, can our Waldorf universities facilitate this need of educating people in a way that they can actually talk Waldorf in a, in a today's language. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that belongs to the whole movement, not only certain people. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is a question you have to put to the, to the teachers in, in uh, Croatia. Huh? Yeah. Are they willing to work together to find people who are uh, able, capable to do that and willing mm. to? Yeah. Mm. That, is, that is a step into the future. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you, Nicolina. So there's another hand by Bettina, but in the chat there has been two questions before. I take them and after that you have the word, Bettina, okay? Um, this is Amanda. Um, she asks, um, it's easier to, or she says, it's easier per to perpetuate the form than to realize the impulse. And we tend to take the easier path. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, but uh, now, if you have experienced it for yourself, uh, I have experienced it myself. If you, if you walk too long on the, on, on the, on, on the side of the tradition and the form and so on, then then you then you kill yourself in the end because you dry out. It is as if you are constantly thirsty. I I had planned, by the way, I'm very happy with this question, to to end with the phrase out of that of that book, Knowledge of the Higher Worlds. This is this phrase, it is very short. Um, every idea that does not become your ideal kills a power in your soul. Every idea that becomes an ideal engenders life forces within you. That is the answer to this question. Yeah? Do I find the ideal in the, in the impulse and becomes that uh, do I find the idea in the impulse and thus that becomes my ideal? Then I get new energy and new forces. Yeah. 
So that is such a very simple thing, and it is so true that that I I would like to answer to that question. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Okay. So there's and another question by by Apana. It's a bit longer um, question. Um, from my recent experiences, I have begun to realize that Waldorf School brought out my fears as a parent, and I tried to overcome my fears and go with the flow. But where do we draw a line that it, it is not about my fear, but something is missing as a process? Or should I question someone else's notion or impulse or form? How far can I trust the process or see the shortcomings as part of the growth process? I'm a Waldorf educator and anthroposophical psychotherapists in my journey. Could you grasp it, um, the question, Christoph? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is very precise how he finds uh, uh, words. I, I copy it for everyone so you can, can read it if yeah. you like. I think it's okay with the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm not, I'm so not. Uh, Thank you. Sorry, that was your question. Yeah, Apana put the question in. Yeah, I put it now in the chat for everyone to, to read it. Yeah, now it is a little bit risky what, what I, I say now, but I... Uh, yeah, I mean, your question is, a, is an absolutely wonderful question and it's a good question. But there is this, and I do not know, basically, I do not know the answer to it, Apana. But we have to distinguish. Do we have to do with people who follow the idea and wants to make it to their ideal? Then they can make a mistake, and then you know they are on the right track. But we also have to deal with people who have this who does not meet this quality. We have very often people who are from the from the inner. Yeah, it's a quite quite risky to to talk to say that, but. We have also to deal with people in the in the in the world of schools who are from their inner capacities, so to say, not ready for this work. And you see that in their social shortcomings, we see that in their educational shortcomings, and we see that in, for example, in the incapacity to uh, to work together. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is not nothing to do new education. Yeah. So Arpana, you here? I I do not give you an answer, but what I can say to you is that I understand your question very well. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. And while asking the question, there are so many things going on in my mind, and you can very well understand. Yeah. And sometimes questioning myself also that who am I to question anyone else's journey? Yeah. So that constant reminder in my own head to distinguish between am I, am I thinking too much or where to draw, draw those boundaries yeah, 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 yeah. for myself? Mm -hmm. You get those intuitive feeling, but then you also tell yourself, who am I to question someone else's mm -hmm. journey or path? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I ready for that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, may, may I give you a suggestion? May I give Sorry? you a suggestion? Yes, yes, sure, surely so. Yeah. It, it it sounds a bit stupid, <laughs> but try to do four weeks every day in the same moment in the early evening or so. In light lives wisdom. And just look what happens to you. My experience is if you do that, let's say for three, four minutes a day, then you get an inner orientation. 
And what you're now describing is, <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking too much, where is my orientation? Yeah, yeah. Just try it. Yeah, we should experiment with this inner capacities, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Bettina. Yeah, uh, I need a bit of courage, uh, not only because of my bad English, since I'm speaking uh, Spanish here in Peru, uh, but um, also because of the content. Um, you uh, took this this picture, this quality, uh, Christoph, uh, when, uh, uh, with the fire of the Goetheanum. No, and what did we had before and what came afterwards? So we could see the fire and uh, the the horrible <laughs> point in it, no, it, in, and it was, but we can see, and you said it in this way, what was burning, what was possible through that, because of that. And now um, I don't want to say it in a dramatic way uh, in relation to world of pedagogics um, here in Peru, but possibly in, in all over the world a bit in this pandemic situation. Uh, here it was a bit extreme. We um, couldn't have classes uh, in, in presence form. Uh, for about two years, okay? And we could say, wow, it was horrible. And it, and it was in some way. <laughs> but yeah, um, something was dying. You said it, no? Um, something in world of movement can die in a negative way or in a positive way. So... The, this positive quality we could observe here, and possibly all of you have small uh, stars or examples, um, so much died, uh, the, the, the form died, the nice classrooms died. <laughs> no? uh, we had to, ha to make uh, classes online and yeah, it was a, a, a teacher suffering, a lot of fear, yeah, in, in a lot of people. But I heard of parents or of teachers so nice and new things that was incredible. And up to now it is like that. No? So for example, uh, a parent said, wow, it's incredible. Just now, because of this situation, I'm understanding uh, the essential point of water pedagogics, <laughs> no? or yeah. uh, teachers, uh, they are uh, in, in the teacher training, in our teacher training, are saying, oof, I, I lost people, and uh, people were dying in Peru because of COVID, and um, that brought me to water pedagogic. That's why I'm studying now world of pedagogy. With I'm I want to make teacher training with you, yeah. because or in relation, not because of, so I have to to be careful. No, yeah, yeah. Uh, you 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 got my point. No, yeah, 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 yeah. what I'm saying possibly the new thing in these years on the future is so uh, yeah die to to born to get born no it's it's the same dying and uh yeah come up, coming up is is the same thing and uh possibly we need courage to to die not in a dramatic way as uh, but in the way to dissolve things dissolve dissolve auflösen yeah, no? yeah, yeah, to yeah, let yeah. die things to so uh, this courage, no? Yeah. Um, that's my point, to, to come to courage or how yeah, to yeah, develop yeah, yeah. courage, yeah. no? Thank to you, die. Bettina. Thank you. Yeah, that's my point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, we, are, we need courage, that's true, to say, say to all things, that's enough. And even if you are not, uh, uh, even if you have not uh, the, the solution for the future, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I agree. Are there other questions? Yes, there is one from Nisha, I put it in the chat. Um, maybe you can read it or Nisha can give it in short words to us. Is Nisha somewhere here? Um, hi. Hi, Nisha. Hi, Nisha. Hi, Christoph. Um, yeah, I was just wondering about um, who do we go to if the school management haven't got the awareness to do the inner work? Because what I'm seeing is that the children are being affected with imbalances. Um, therapy is not reaching them. Losing our school art therapy, eurythmist, um, so I'm wondering if that's something that needs to go through the Steiner Waldorf Fellowship. So a top down suggestion of doing the inner work or do we just wait it out? Or should I be doing the inner work? <laughs> because it's um, troubling me yeah, so yeah, much. Yeah, so which, yeah, 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 yeah. direction. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this, this is wonderful what you say, but it is quite risky. Yeah? Uh, so if uh, if my if one of my friends come to me and said to to me uh, you are stupid you are not doing your inner work then uh, then it is not easy to have a communication then huh? so uh, that is anthroposophy is something of the freedom of the human being mm. and we never ever can say to another, do your inner work. Even if the inner work, our professional meditations, for example, uh, should be done. But there is no authority in the world, even not Steiner, who can prescribe it. Because anthroposophy is totally built on freedom. So if you have problems with with the management in your school, then I would talk with the management about you about the problems, but not about their inner work. Do you understand what I mean, Nisha? I do. Yes, I tried that, but I didn't get anywhere. Yeah, yeah, I can understand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Lots of offers were made. Yeah, yeah. Nothing. nothing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Nisha, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. I I know this problem very well. It's a problem that happens on quite some places. But uh, the solution has to come out of, uh, uh, for example, if you have uh, colleagues in your school who have the the same opinion as you, then sit together with them and talk. What what can we do? to solve the, the problem. Tried that, everyone just left at the end of the yeah. year yeah. because yeah, yeah, it wasn't going anywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the ones who were loudest stayed and the ones who were not being heard just left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now that's also a form of dying, yeah? Mm, yeah, maybe that's necessary. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Christine. Yeah, I'm so sorry, Nisha, that I cannot uh, help. Eh? But these are the these are the these are also situations of our time. And mm. as uh, Bettina said, uh, yeah, we we need the courage to overcome that. But I cannot give practical advices on this distance for for that situation. You understand that? Eh? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the time amazing. Nikolai. Hello, good evening from Denmark. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I will. Yeah, I have uh, an idea about this uh, this form of uh, of uh, and the impulse 
uh, because it's very much in in a question of the consciousness. And as I understand, at least in the north of uh, of Denmark and Norway, and also a little bit in Germany and in Switzerland and in Croatia and quite much in, in the world as I have approached different Waldorf teachers and pedagogues, we have an, an issue about the impulse of anthroposophy, of people actually being able to express and to debate without their uh, being of my opinion, but a, being in a state of having an, an uh, a platform of discussing and debating. And I think to let anthroposophy become alive again, we need to make it flourish by understanding that anthroposophy is the base, because that is what Steiner, he was very clear about. Anthroposophy comes first before everything else. And if people are not really educated and you take a lot of other impulses into the schools and the kindergartens, and then something is starting to break. I think that this is something that is very important to address everywhere in the world. If you want uh, to talk about the impulse of consciousness and to have a form that can rebuild this great work that Steiner laid the foundation on 100 years ago. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, very interesting, Nikolai. Um, you said we have to rebuild, huh? and I guess that's very true. We have to, uh, we have to rebuild the, the understanding of what was meant. And from there, we have to find the ways for, for, for our education practice. Yeah, 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 yeah. We are, we are in a situation of rebuilding. Yeah, and if we do that with the courage that Tina spoke about, then, then uh, we can do something. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much, Nikolai. You always um, started to build the bridge to our next lecture next week. <laughs> and we are coming at the end of our time because uh, Peter Latzka, who is with us, maybe you will um, g give us a bit of a taste what you're going to talk about. Uh, that's good. The topic is anthroposophy as a source of renewal of wildlife education. So maybe just come in and um, let us know what you're going to talk about, Peter. I was planning to save it for next week. <laughs> I'm, I'm Just very to grateful inspire to our interest. Because he, uh, because he gave me a lot of uh, thoughts that I'm really glad to work with. And, I, you know, the ideal situation would be everybody's back next week because we could really take, take this further because that was a wonderful. a wonderful talk. I'm really grateful. And I've written four pages here while you're talking of things that, that I'd like to touch on, which I won't have the time to touch on all of them, but certainly some of them. Thank you, and I'm looking forward to seeing everybody next week. Uh, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful, Peter. Yeah, I'm looking forward yeah, to hear you. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much, Christoph. Thank you, Laura, for um, arranging everything, and thank you for joining us, and hope to see you again next week, all of you. Have a good day, a good night, a good morning, whatever you have in your country, and see you next week. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.